Okay, no slides, no speech, <laughs> just you and me, and my countdown timer is running the rules of a lightning talk. So when the alarm goes, I stop talking. So mid-sentence, if not, that's it. So, here we go. Uh, what Milan didn't say is, at the root of everything I do, I'm a mentor to executives and managers on enterprise investment, in which enterprise architecture and enterprise design is an absolutely vital part of what they are doing. Now, most executives and managers do not yet know that they are doing enterprise investment. They're just doing it. And what they're doing is they're investing in existing operations and getting some outcomes from existing operations. They're exist, exist, investing in change alongside existing operations and getting some outcomes from change. And the benchmark for investing in change is that about 30% on average of the projects they will invest in deliver the outcomes that they're expecting. Now, that's a benchmark. That means to say that academics and others have done research for many years discovering how successful people are investing in change in their enterprise and keep coming back to the same number. So they tend to reverse it. They tend to say the, the performance is 70% of projects fail. Well, you know, investment is investment, and some investments work and some don't. That's a fact of life. So what I work with people to do is to make sure they're achieving their goals for investing in operations and investing in change, um, where perhaps as many as 30% of their change projects actually deliver the outcomes they're expecting. So there is a design um, task there, because the enterprise is always designed to achieve certain things. So enterprise design management um, happens in enterprises, but informally. So an enterprise is a bit different, say, from a building or a car or an aeroplane or anything that we can otherwise design. Because one of the key characteristics of an enterprise is it keeps redesigning itself. So, for example, the Sydney Opera House can't literally wake up in the morning and decide to rebrand itself green. We can. Okay? Um, those sorts of things, enterprises can wake up in the morning, decide to rebrand themselves green and get on with it. So, Enterprise design management has a different flavor to it, a different characteristic to it, than much of the design management we always talk about. Um, otherwise, it's similar. That um, we have an enterprise that's already designed. It's designed to achieve certain outcomes. We have some outcomes in mind going into the future, so we're probably going to have to redesign it. So far, so good. Now, my work as a mentor means I sit down with people, and in a very short period of time, um, needs to help them evaluate how likely it is they're going to achieve their goals, both professionally in terms of their job and personally. So while I was listening this morning to timescales, while it's true that getting better and better at enterprise design management as an enterprise takes time, I usually have, when it comes down to it, a few moments in which to work with someone to either let them know that, where the, that the journey they're on seems to be consistent with their goals, or let them know, let them think through that the journey they're on is not consistent with their goals. So a few moments is the time scale that we tend to have in which can influence senior people to either carry on in the direction they are, or to change direction and then redesign the enterprise. So let me just give you a little caricature, a little something, about an interaction with the chief executive of a successful enterprise um, that I've worked with. And the, the, the backstory, because I'm a, a specialist in enterprise investment, we'd already worked on the extent to which the projects the company was doing was actually going to achieve the chief executive's outcomes. And we'd already started to redesign the way in which we all looked at projects when they're outcomes driven. And so sitting with the chief executive in their office, I'm being very careful about gender and all sorts of things, because I'm not allowed to reveal anything to you other than this is a true story, um, their office. Um, I said to the chief executive, OK, so here's your in investment portfolio for projects. You can see the extent to which it's likely to achieve your goals or not, as it's currently, um, as it's currently constructed. 
Um, you've got people all over the place, all over the place, who, who work for you, with you, against you, who are having ideas, let's say in their bathtub, on their own, about a, a solution to a problem in which you might appear, your company might appear. Because um, that's how enterprise design works. It's sort of lots and lots of people sitting in cars, bathtubs, whatever, on their own, coming up with a solution. Um, so I, this is the point I wanted to get to. Just checking my time. Um, I asked the chief executive, what is your design for the future of this enterprise? That was the reaction I got. Um, complete silence. Stunned look on the question. Well, that's OK, as long as we can get into a conversation now about what a design for the future of the enterprise might look like. Because what I can tell you about working with executives, driving their investments in change from outcomes they want to achieve, is, um, you may already know this, executives are very tangible people. Not only are the people tangible, you can sort of walk up and poke them, but they, they, they work on a very tangible foundation that if it comes down to this, I'm probably going to understand what you tell me. Can you tell me what it would look like in terms of people, money, and technologies? And only the technologies I can see, please. So if you, if you can express it to me like that, we are able to understand each other. If it gets all a bit sort of <coughs> fluffy, I'm going to lose my connection with what you're trying to tell me. And just before lunch, if you're here just before lunch, we had a, a great presentation from, from 3M about don't tell people what design is. I'm paraphrasing. Just do it well. And that's what I was doing then as best I could. Don't tell her what design was. Just do it well. But ask her the question, what is... I just said uh, Ask the person the question, what is your design for the future of the enterprise, is a risky question to ask. Because you may get that silent look. And either you know how to handle it now, or you don't. So something about design there, uh, I gave a talk in Columbus, Ohio, uh, at a conference, big conference on innovation, about innovation in the scope and role of the executive. And the unexpected happened, something I had not designed my particular part to, uh, to cater for. It's halfway through an hour's presentation, the fire alarm went off. And everyone had to leave the room. Um, and then sometime later, everyone had to come back into the room. And two things happened. Firstly, they noticed I picked up exactly where I left off. The other thing was, when they came back into the room, it was a tall stage. I was sitting on the edge of the stage waiting for them, as if I'd been there all along. It's like, I've been out like you guys. I've been running away. So the unexpected happens is what we're designing for. When you've got potentially millions of people, hundreds of thousands, tens of thousands, at least hundreds of people sitting in baths, cars, and everything else, coming up with a solution to a problem they're now going to invest themselves in, our enterprise design management challenge is to somehow coordinate all of that so that the sum total of all the things we actually invested in creates not only the outcomes in terms of customer satisfaction, in terms of revenue, in terms of cost, in terms of brand reputation and compliance, all those things we invest in to achieve as outcomes, but one more outcome that we turned into the enterprise we actually meant to be. Okay. Now, that is the, the, what was behind my question of the chief executive. Um, to a greater or lesser extent, the enterprise investment portfolio was to achieve the goals that they set down for investing in change. They could see that. It's very visual. It was expressed in terms of money and other things, and that they, they could see. But if, you, if we did all that in the way that has been so far designed, with individual point solutions being well thought of, people invested in them, well designed individually, would we turn into the enterprise that you want us to? I don't know what enterprise we want to turn into, was the kind of the blank look. Now, I don't mean to criticize anybody. That's kind of normal behaviors in many people's cases. The, the person just hadn't really thought through what the sum total of the individual projects would add up to, not only in terms of outcomes, but in terms of structure. So one of the outcomes um, that we invest in change to achieve, on top of investing in operations, is a continually evolving structure that keeps being the structure that we want as the, the market outside keeps changing. Um, and that is a challenge facing boardrooms that many of them understand, um, are, are meeting pretty well day in, day out. But what they're kind of missing is something extra in which we could achieve this more confidently 
and probably better, and less risky. The very best enterprise investment strategy is one that achieves your goals, as we say in the language, as risk efficiently as you can. So actually we design enterprise investment portfolios to strip out risk while still achieving our goals. So part of the risk efficiency in the language of investment of, of an enterprise is its ability to keep evolving, evolving, sometimes small, sometimes big, as part of a bigger ecosystem outside in without putting more at risk than it needs to be put, to put at risk. So that is a big design challenge. Okay, because um, go back to the people in the baths, cars, whatever. Um, you'd hope that if I had an idea for how to make my part of an enterprise work better, that I'd invest myself and my own personal enterprise in the idea. That's what you expect me to do. So I can leap out of my bath, tell myself down, I'm really invested in a solution. Now, enterprise design management may tell me that, firstly, we don't like your solution. Um, OK, I might have to take that on the chin, as we said in English. Or we like your proposition, but we needed to change your solution. Or we actually love your solution, so we're going to make your solution everyone's solution, or something like that. So um, how we treat individuals who have ideas is really crucial to enterprise investment, enterprise design management, um, because they have already invested their own enterprise in the idea. In fact, enterprise architecture was an idea 30 years ago that many people are still invested in. Enterprise design is an idea we're invested in, and so on. These are also ideas. And we want to know, so what problem do they solve? That's the wrong question. What we want to know is, given these are outcomes we're investing in, how can they get us to our outcomes more risk efficiently? OK. That's what enterprise design has to do, get us to our outcomes more risk efficiently, then we're interested. Go back to another thing that those of us here this morning heard again, is while the enterprise design is essentially, enterprise design management is essentially company-wide, enterprise-wide, it often ends up in a department, possibly called enterprise design, which is OK. But the danger is it becomes another silo, as we say. Now, again, a characteristic of people that run enterprises, being tangible people, is uh, a model of the enterprise which describes it in terms of tangible activities is one that they will generally use. So there are models around that describe things like marketing and operations and inbound logistics and things like that, because they can, they can easily visualize somebody somewhere doing that thing. And they can visualize that, say, inbound logistics captures some value, turns it into something else of value. I can see that happening. Whereas things like design, architecture, even investment, even strategy, um, they're trying to think, where do I put this in my design of an enterprise based on discrete activities? And therein lies the problem, the design problem. Is if, we, if the executives are using a design template that's based on discrete activities, because these are tangible things, that we have to somehow collectively with them introduce them to a, a complementary template, if that's the right word, of things we need to do that are pervasive to being an enterprise rather than discrete activity. Strategy is one of them, investment's one of them, um, sourcing these days is one of them, um, and particularly enterprise architecture and enterprise design are two related ones. And that's why it can be difficult to drive outcomes by investing in enterprise design, because people may try and taunt, turn it into a tangible, discrete activity when enterprise design management is without doubt an enterprise-wide capability. So we all have the challenge of probably being called something, with investment, design, architecture, strategy, while avoiding the trap of ending up apparently doing it on our own, in a room somewhere, somewhere in the world, rather than doing what we heard already in this conference, getting out there, making it pervasive, making it produce outcomes as risk efficiently as we can. I think that's all I've got time to say. 10 seconds is left. Any new sentence apart from this one will probably have the alarm going off in the middle of it. Thank you very much, Milan. Thank you very much, everybody. The alarm goes off in two, one, done. Thank you.